Moonhaven, an IO-assisted society, is built on the moon and inhabited by Earth settlers looking for ways to save the planet from extinction. As Bella pilots the ship boarded by the envoy of Io to Moonhaven, she uncovers a mystery that changes her life forever. One night in Moonhaven, Chillspin runs aimlessly through the woods while holding a glowing device in the shape of a flower. Despite being exhausted, Chill continues to run while being chased by a young man, Strago Nal, who eventually catches her. Strago takes the device from Chill, who says he's making a mistake. Strago points out he's doing it for Chill, but the girl just tells him to let go and snatches the device before bolting again. Still, Strago goes after her. The next morning, two detectives, Paul and Arlo, are walking around the forest when they find a girl's corpse. Paul uses his handheld device called Chancellor to identify the girl as Chill Spen, whom he suspects has been dead for seven and a half hours. The Chancellor also easily solves the mystery, revealing that Strago Nal is responsible for Chill's death. As they prepare to leave, the men notice a woman in the distance who introduces herself as Asus. Asus looks mournful and disturbed while Paul tries to interrogate her, saying she came there because she had the dread feel, adding that it swept through her and she felt trouble. Unfortunately, when Asus arrived, it was already too late for Chill, her sister. Sympathizing with Asus, Paul offers her the Bright, a special tablet in Moonhaven that will free anyone from memory, pain, and drudge. However, when Asus declines, Paul resolves to give Asus his name in case she changes her mind. Before leaving, Paul promises that Chill will be cared for and that justice will be served. In the year 2201, on Earth, human beings wait for the bridge, their way to the future, which is set to begin with the arrival of the first wave of Lunars. They are believed to save the Earth from its impending doom through their planet-saving advances created by Io, a powerful self-teaching artificial intelligence buried in the moon. The woman behind this idea is Indira Mare, popularly known as the Envoy of Io. Meanwhile, Bella Sway, a seemingly indifferent lady pilot, meets Tom, the Envoy's bodyguard, while she silently reads a book inside a room. When Indira enters, Tom introduces Bella as the new pilot on their flight to Moonhaven, and Indira only wishes Bella to bring them safely to the moon and back to Earth. After Indira leaves them behind, Bella is unable to contain her excitement that she will take the Envoy of Io to the moon. So, Tom points out that Bella was vetted, saying her military experience qualifies her. Soon, their ship takes off. While Bella is alone in a room, she talks to her friend, JD, who instructs her to bring home a singer, a substance only available in Moonhaven that's used in ceremonies. JD is determined to make a duplicate of the substance on Earth, so all he asks of Bella is to wait for someone who will deliver it to her. In Moonhaven, Paul and Arlo head to jail to visit Strago, who's been detained in cell number 3. As they come face to face, Paul attempts to make Strago confess to killing Chill, but the young man dodges his question. To make things easier, Arlo uses the Chancellor to show how Strago was caught in the act of killing Chill. Exposed, Strago shamefully faces them, and Arlo tells him the moon is no place for the darkness he brings, finding him guilty. Arlo then exits for lunch, but Paul, seemingly concerned for Strago, stays behind to urge him to make things right. But Strago only takes advantage of Paul's defenselessness, and he headbutts him to escape. Arlo returns to check on Paul after hearing the commotion, but the other officer advises them not to pursue Strago because he has nowhere else to go. He instead summons them for another matter. In Cat, Bella wakes Andira and Tom as they are about to enter Moonhaven. However, when she does not receive a response from Tom, Bella becomes concerned, prompting Andira to explain that it is normal for Tom to oversleep. While they wait for the man to wake up, Andira strikes up a conversation in which she learns that Bella has never walked on Glade or the Lunar Colony despite the number of times she piloted a ship to Moonhaven. Bella seems oddly uninterested in Io and its promise of a bright future which makes Andira amused and curious about her. But their conversation is briefly interrupted when Tom awakens. After ensuring everything is set, Bella goes to the control room to turn on some music, as it helps her concentrate while maneuvering her spaceship, Cat, to get inside Moonhaven. It isn't long before they reach the beautiful Moonhaven, and Bella lands in the middle of the sea. While Andira and Tom prepare to disembark, Bella wonders why Tom is bringing a gun despite knowing that weapons do not work on Glade, leading the man to humor her that it makes his silhouette look good. As Andira wants Bella to get a chance of perspective, she invites her to come ashore with them as her guest, but Bella only declines. Upon reaching the land, Andira happily listens to the song offered by the Mooners or locals of Moonhaven. Afterward, Indira and Tom walk with council chair Mighty Voss, and Indira admits she didn't expect the woman to meet her. The Mooners express their gratitude and admiration toward Indira for Io. However, refusing to be put on a pedestal, Indira clarifies that she is only its messenger. 
Indera further explains that Io exists to serve the world, or otherwise, it will be shut down. Then, Council Mighty warmly adds that the first wave is excited to return to Earth, which calls for rigorous work on their end. Meanwhile, Bella is outside the ship when a pelican flies near and dives into the sea, causing something that resembles an egg to float afterward. Curious, Bella retrieves and cracks it open inside Cat and it reveals a strange object. While Bella scrutinizes the object, Detectives Paul and Arlo ring the alarm outside the ship, so she grants them access after they ask to come inside. Bella first secures the object in a drawer and cleans the mess, and when she curiously asks about the detective's business on the ship, they surprisingly drop to Bella that she needs to come with them. Despite not knowing the real motive of the detectives, Bella rides the bicycle with them, whining that the envoy won't be happy with her disappearance on the ship. Wondering if she's been charged with anything, Bella inquires about getting a lawyer, but Arlo says Moonhaven doesn't have one. As they pass the park where the Mooners are, Paul tells her about the Kinetibet, a dance alphabet that every Mooner has to learn. Upon getting inside the interrogation room, Bella observes the detectives' odd customs, like taking two deep breaths to clear their minds. After asking Bella why she came to Moonhaven, Paul reveals that she's there to be questioned about someone's death. Paul also asks if she's felt nothing since the day before, pointing out that in Moonhaven, they acknowledge the dreadfeel. Paul continues to explain that it's the feeling Mooners get when someone close to them dies. However, Bella insists that she has nothing to do with anyone's death, saying she thought Moonhaven was a paradise without killings. Then, Paul curiously asks about Bella's Mooner mother, but Bella hesitates for a while as she never knew her. What she only knows is that her mother decided to go to the moon after Bella was born, abandoning her on Earth. As Bella grows tired of being questioned about her feelings for her unknown mother, she stands up and heads to the door to leave. But Paul informs her that her sister, Chill Spen, was found dead that morning. Bella finds the men ridiculous as she doesn't have any siblings, leading Paul to explain that Io flagged her as blood when she entered their airspace. Having heard enough, Bella walks back to the two detectives, sarcastically showing them how interrogations work by asking them the right questions. But the detectives simply let her talk and eventually inform her that the case is already solved, adding that they're not really interrogating her but helping her grieve. The detectives feel obligated to ease her anguish and longing for her mother, who died 10 years ago. Sadly, this shocks Bella. As Bella starts to get upset, Paul, who cannot offer her the bright for being an outsider, suggests doing the screen jig, a dance that Mooners do to ease someone's pain. Bella has no idea what a screen jig is, but when the detectives start dancing, she immediately tries to stop them, feeling embarrassed. While they continue dancing, Tom arrives to intervene, and relief washes over Bella as she departs. As they walk around Moonhaven, Bella learns that Tom told Indira she needed to be rescued as the police wouldn't tell him why they pulled her in. While observing the lively and peaceful environment, Bella pessimistically thinks that the Mooner's way of life may not work on Earth, especially since its inhabitants know nothing but war, starvation, and other bad things. Despite Tom's effort to make her think about the matter positively, Bella remains skeptical, believing that darkness will find a way to consume them. Meanwhile, Strago stealthily moves in the forest as he retrieves a box hidden under the grass. After removing his shirt, the young man takes a strange object from the box, using it to get something from his back. Later that day, Paul visits Bella and Kat again. He tells her about Chill's water sister, Asis, a girl Chill grew up with in the same household and with the same Mooner parents. Paul also explains that Mooners don't raise their own children but raise others' kids. At the same time, Mooners only see their blood children when they are born or when the parents are about to die. Bella isn't paying attention, but Paul reveals that Asus has decided to take the bright, which will soften her memory. Asus wishes to see Bella before she forgets, but Bella refuses and asks Paul to apologize on her behalf. However, after Bella hears that Asus has a message for her from her biological mother, she changes her mind and goes with Paul to the girl's house. Asus anticipates their arrival, and she introduces them to Chill's dog named Orbis. When they go inside, Asus asks for Paul's guidance on her first attempt at taking the bride while Bella silently observes her surroundings. Remaining patient as always, Paul assures Asus that the bride will only put her to sleep and when she wakes up, she will still remember things, but the pain will be frozen. While Bella curiously watches them, Asus directs her gaze on her, telling her that she can feel the pain in her root. But despite thinking that Bella needs the bride more than her, Asus still proceeds to take it. Then she requests to see Bella's face clearly. As Bella approaches, Asus shares that when she and Chill were little and playing alone by the sea, a woman who had Bella's face walked out of the forest. The woman picked up Chill to say goodbye, but before she left, she whispered something into Chill's ear. It was about having a biological sister on Earth who would look after Chill, clearly pertaining to Bella. Asus soon gets sleepy, so Paul and Bella decide to let her rest. 
But before they can leave, Asus whispers that there was a third in the glade, sister, killer, and watcher. As they go outside, Paul tells Bella that Asus must have been mistaken because Io showed there was no third, and the machine has never been wrong. Curious, Bella inquires how Io works, leading Paul to show and explain that it uses the satellite to track the implants on their back since their birth. Bella is shocked to learn about the trackers, but Paul argues that Io watches them to learn from their experiences rather than control them. Then, he leaves upon hearing the horn that signals the envoy's speech. Andira's speech is aired not only in Moonhaven but all over the world. She talks about how the pyre of Io will assist mankind in exploring a better Earth for the good of humanity, particularly in providing its basic needs. She also adds that the mission of Moonhaven is to show them on Earth the way, and soon, the cultural and technological leaps there will be brought back to their home planet. Meanwhile, Bella, Paul, and Orbis go to the spot where Jill's body was found, and upon finding some sort of petal with markings on the ground, Bella secretly keeps it in her pocket. Bella wants Paul to admit that something's off about Chill's case, and when he does, Bella suddenly hears something from the woods. After seeing a girl with long hair running away from them, Bella quickly goes after her, followed by Paul. Upon reaching a wall, Paul warns Bella not to go past it. Despite that, she stubbornly enters the hole that leads to the other end, which looks like a barren land. There, Bella notices the earth from afar as she starts having trouble breathing. Meanwhile, Orbis tries chasing the girl up a tree. Bella sees this and catches up to them, but she eventually falls to the ground, hearing Orbis whimpering and looking at the girl before passing out. On the other hand, Council Mighty congratulates Andira for delivering a great speech. Eventually, Andira confronts Council Mighty about her real reason for coming to Moonhaven, involving Icon's request for a council swap after Io detected patterns of corruption under the woman's leadership. Without the intention of offending Council Mighty, Indira calmly informs her that the swap is preventative and she may step aside with honor. However, Council Mighty only retorts with a threatening and vague statement regarding the pivot, or the movement from the people who seek to understand the mysteries of the universe to the ones that create them. Trying to avoid an argument, Indira only tells Council Mighty that she expects her cooperation with the swap, then walks away with Tom while the Moonhaven leader watches her meaningfully. Bella awakens inside an unfamiliar room. Then she walks to the dining room where Paul, his partner, Lone, their children, and a man named Fritz are eating. Bella then decides to join them, and while they eat, she learns from Paul that she was found barely alive under a dead tree. Paul is also the one who suggested taking her to his house to recover. To make a conversation, Paul shares that their son, Wish, will ride the first wave back to Earth. Wish asks if the Earthers understand that Mooners are coming to help them begin again, so Bella replies that they do, but it might take some time for them to pick up on the nuance of everything else. Then, Fritz, who seems to be Lone's other partner, tells Bella she was foolish to go past the wall. As it turns out, Paul lied and told them that Bella went there to save a dog, and Fritz continues to compare Earthers with Mooners, making it clear they're better than those of Earth. Later that night, Bella informs Paul that she has to return to Kent, especially since Indira is done with her business in Moonhaven. Still bothered about the girl from the woods, Bella inquires if Paul has seen her, but Paul answers that he is far behind to see the girl. Bella admits that she is unsure of what she saw, but Paul believes there is a reason behind it. As he also grows comfortable around Bella, Paul wishes that she would stay to aid him in doing detective work, prompting Bella to advise him not to trust everything. When Bella returns to the room to retrieve her stuff, Elna, Paul's daughter, approaches to ask about Bella's mooner mother and sister, but Bella says she never knew them. So, Elna reveals she never met her mother either. As their talk turns sentimental, Elna prepares to dance for Bella, and not wanting to hurt the child, she eventually lets the little girl dance for her. Afterward, Bella finally returns the cat. Then the ship alerts her after detecting motion inside. After checking the intruder's location, she calmly walks while wearing a stun glove. Upon finding the man, Bella electrocutes him using the glove. While interrogating the guy, who happens to be Strago, Bella learns he's a mooner through the wound on his back where his implant used to be. When Strago instead asks for a ride to leave Moonhaven, saying he's wounded the place and its people, Bella immediately connects that he is the one who killed her sister. Then, after Bella hears Tom calling her from upstairs, she orders Strago to stay behind and remain silent. But as Bella goes up to meet Tom, Strago stubbornly follows, prompting Tom to immediately shoot him. While Bella worriedly looks at Strago's body, Tom unexpectedly strangles her from behind, leading her to electrocute him with a glove. However, it isn't enough to defeat Tom, so Bella grabs a tool from the chair to burn the man's eye. Despite that, Tom instantly bounces back and they continue fighting inside the ship. As Tom mercilessly beats up Bella around Cat and strangles her, Bella grabs the mysterious thing she's hidden in the drawer. Then, she stabs Tom in the neck with it and causes him to be weak, rendering him unconscious. Bella quickly walks outside, where she sees Paul waiting, claiming he's there because of his bad feeling. 
With the turnout of events, Bella admits she doesn't know who to trust, but Paul puts something on her wrist and turns it on. Then, Paul asks Bella to trust him and she passes out. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.